Now to the latest on the battle when it comes to coronavirus. Dr. Anthony Fauci making headlines just this morning, speaking on a virtual panel at the World Economic Forum, saying there is a risk that the existing vaccines might not fight future variants, and he's, quote, worried about delays to second COVID vaccine doses. Dr. Gabe Kellen is Director of Emergency Medicine at Johns Hopkins University, and he joins me now from Baltimore. Uh, Dr. Kellen, thanks so much for being here. Let's start with the latest on the roll rollout of the vaccine. As we know, it has been slow. Some states are now having chiropractors, pharmacy students, even optometrists give shots. Um, where do we stand? Are, are all the shots available when it comes to the shots that are available? Are they all being released? Well, we don't fully know if they're all being released. It, it appears that uh, everything has been released, and we're hoping to backfill second doses with uh, current and future manufacturing. Uh, as you know, because of the way the public health system is set up in the U.S., this is quilt work and patchwork. There are places where there's lots of vaccine, but not uh, being given out fast enough, and there are places that are very well set up to give vaccine, uh, but don't have enough um, to give it out. And then there's further confusion as people have attempted to modify the original plan, uh, either in terms of spreading out when the second dose is available um, or possibly thinking of giving half doses as, as, um, as they might in other countries. Uh, so there's a lot of confusion, but you know, common sense has to prevail here. Uh, the previous administration probably overstated its optimism as to what could be done with the amount of vaccine um, that occurred. And that's natural. That's not a particular hit on that administration. But when all is said and done, we're only 30 days into it. You know, that, that week before Christmas really doesn't count. Yeah. There's no way to get organized. And the week between Christmas and New Year's is not that easy to get organized. So we're about 30 days into it. And we know that this is at minimum five, six months. And so we're still at the level of trying to master the system. Dr. Kellen, we've, we've heard a lot from Dr. Fauci in recent days, including this morning. I, I want to go to some tape of, of him speaking uh, just in, uh, in, in the last uh, few minutes or even in the last hour. Uh, let's take a listen to what he had to say. You don't get full uh, efficacy until you get that second dose. And if you allow suboptimal efficacy, you can actually immunologically select more for mutations when you do that. So that's the reason why, you know, it may not be the case, but it gets risky. And that's the reason why we prefer to keep it on the time that the clinical trial said. So this is Fauci responding to uh, ostensibly the question of whether or not you can delay that, that second dose. What do you make of, of his comments? And we'd, the second dose would be delayed to give more people the first dose, and of course, because of supply uh, and, and uh, supply constraints. Now, he is spot on from my perspective. I'm really happy to hear him say that because it, it brings some sanity back to even further chaos that could ensue. If we delay that second dose and we have a whole bunch of people with sort of partial or weak immunity, and then we have all these other new strains coming into play, we won't have a clue as to whether the new strains are overcoming the vaccine uh, or the new strains are more lethal or the vaccine sort of work, but maybe not really, and it was the delay. You know, we picked, the, we picked something we know that works. We need to stick to it. I, I share his perspective. What about the, the concern that existing vaccines might not actually fight future variants if we're, if we're thinking down the road uh, when it comes to this pandemic? Well, that's another reason to stick to the timeline um, because the more this is spread out and um, you know these variants come into play and you have partial immunity, it is a very, very smart virus. Uh, it'll select for mutations when you only have partial immunity. He's, he's absolutely correct that over time, uh, other mutations will come about. And hopefully um, new vaccines, this mRNA technique is pretty quick to develop. New vaccines will come and this will be more or less like a seasonal flu vaccine. At this point, do you think people who have been infected should get the vaccine, Dr. Kellen? And the reason why this is a question is because people who have been affected should have 
immunity to a certain extent for a certain period of time because they have the antibodies. Right. Um, so that's a bit of a controversial subject. At the very least, those already infected um, should generally wait three months, and it's almost like you're you're getting a booster. Mm. Um, you do have some natural uh, immunity, and it should and it should actually be uh, pretty good. So, given that someone has been infected and they have natural immunity, there's great thought being given to, well, let other people go first when there's such a huge demand for first doses right now. I'm wondering when it comes to these mutations, main differences between the, the South Africa and Brazil mutation versus the mutation coming uh, out of the UK and, and the implications around vaccination. So by all accounts, the mutation uh, that came out of the UK, which is now found in at least 22 states, and we seem to be adding one or two any given day, the current uh, mRNA vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, by all accounts, seem to work for that, even though it's more, con more contagious. The South Africa one does not seem to show the same level of um, immune response, at least like in test tubes. But it is felt that the vaccine provides such a robust um, immune response that it's likely to overcome what is right now in the test tube less antibody impact. So we're fairly optimistic that the vaccine will still work even for the South Africa um, and the and the Brazil variants. What we're even more concerned about is well, if you get this type of mutation. And we don't do this properly. Right. We're going to get even more lethal or more difficult mutations, and then we're starting almost all over again. Uh, the Biden administration has this plan and goal of 100 million shots in in 100 days, in the first 100 days. But I got to tell you, um, according to the Bloomberg vaccine tracker, in the last week, an average of 1.16 million doses per day were administered. Um, it's it's starting to seem, at least to me, uh, that this that the Biden administration could very much aim higher. Uh, a, a million doses a day is something we're already at. Yeah, and so a lot of this depends on uh, what is the actual supply. So we've shown throughout the country that we can deliver the doses. Uh, and for the listeners, we recall that 100 million doses is not 100 million people. It includes first and second doses. Right. So that's really 50, 60 million people uh, fully, vaccinized, uh, fully vaccinated Sorry, in the, in the first uh, 100 days. Um, you know, it's still a, a nice sounding goal, so it's not an unreasonable number to stick to, and it's always better to exceed <laughs> your goal than to promise 200 and then you can't do it. Yep, that is a good point. Under promise and over deliver. Dr. Gabe Kellen, Director of Emergency Medicine at Johns Hopkins, thank you as always for your time. We should note that the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health is supported by Michael R. Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies.